So to simulate a PO receipt, I'll click on the PO receipt screen. And then here you can see the warehouse guy only needs to decide whether it's a single receipt, a multiple receipt, or maybe a receipt without PO. So all three functionalities are standard to Sage 300 purchase order. So for today, let's just do a single PO receipt. And here you can see that I should be scanning the PO number. So ideally, uh, the PO form already contains the barcode for the PO number. I can type it in, or of course, I can just do a search. So this is now searching for open POs. And right now, for example, I'm receiving uh, PO number 30 with the reference of testing. I can click on the detail button, and this is now uh, extracting the PO uh, to be received details. I can scan again the items that I'm receiving. So ideally, these items would be in front of the warehouse guy with the labels, so he can just scan it in one go. Uh, I can just double click on the line or I can just type it in. So for example, if I'm receiving 25 pieces, uh, let's say for RM001, let's receive 25 pieces as well. This is now actually the warehouse guy posting a PO receipt to Sage 300. So the receipt 84 is actually the same record in Sage purchase order receipt so the last record is receipt 84, and you can see that we have here PM001 and RM001 with 25 pieces each. So there is no difference whether I use the Sage PO receipt entry screen or the barcode to do it. This is basically what we have just done, is empower the warehouse guy to use a handheld maybe or a tablet, or use the Wi-Fi connection to post a transaction straight to Sage 300. So that was actually already a receipt. If we are dealing with items with log tracking, I can do uh, another example using, let's say, the receipt without PO. So here I'm just selecting a vendor to receive against. Uh, this time I, am, I want to receive something with log. So let's say it's RM101. If I want to receive pen, and you can see that the system automatically detected that uh, this item is log tracked. Uh, I can actually choose to manually scan the lot, but uh, if you want to use internally generated lot numbers, uh, same as in Sage 300, you can just automatically generate. You can see here the lot detail, the quantity, expiry date, and then I can just... So this is an example of a PO receipt for items with lot tracking. And if we go now to Sage PO receipt, you would see here we have receipt 85 with the log details that we have just created. So there is no change in the logic of a PO receipt from Sage 300. The main difference that we have done is who is doing it, how he is doing it, and when is it actually posted to Sage. So with the barcode solution, everything can be real time. So, of course, if we wanted to do a return for whatever reason, we can just click on PO return. Again, I have a choice here, whether it's a single PO return or a uh, return without receipt number. So this is standard to Sage. Let's say I want to do a, retu uh, a return against the receipt that we just posted. So it was receipt 84. And this time, uh, for example, for PM001, for whatever reason, I want to return 7. For PM002, let's say for whatever reason, I want to return 8. I can then close. So if we go back to Sage PO, transaction, uh, return entry, uh, the last record here would be return number 2. And you can see that we have just posted a return of 7 and 8 for the two items involved. Let's say we want to quickly demonstrate uh, OE shipment or the barcode uh, order entry module. So same as in Sage, uh, I can click on the OE shipment button here. Uh, I have an option to either post a single SO shipment or a multiple SO shipment. So again, this is uh, standard to Sage 300. If I click on single SO shipment, I can then select which sales orders we want to ship out.
So let's say if I have a quarter uh, 67 maybe. Here I have uh, two products that I can ship. I can then scan the item number that I'm picking or I can type it in. If I wanted to, I can just double click. And here I can indicate the quantity that we want to ship. So let's say it's A. Uh, and then for FG002, let's say I want to ship uh, 9. At this point, uh, yep, notice that the system also checks if there is sufficient stocks to do this shipment. Assuming that you allow this in Sage to have many more stock, then you can just click close. And this is now a OE shipment triggered by the barcode uh, module. So you can see we have shipment 63 on Sage order entry. We can now look at shipment entry. And uh, the last record should be the last one that we created, order 63. And you can see here 9 and 8 was shipped already based on uh, what we have just posted. So that's basically how a uh, OE shipment will be posted in the barcode module. Now, if we go to the return, you would be able to see here that uh, we can do a shipment return or an invoice return. So in Sage 300, allowing us to reverse a prior shipment, which is not yet invoiced, so I can do a shipment return all I have to do is scan the shipment number that I wish to reverse. So let's do a quick search and let's pick the last record. So this is uh, the item that we just shipped. Let's say for whatever reason, I want to return two of this. So you have two for finished good number two. And then let's say for FG003, I just want to return one. So two one, and then I can post. What you can see here is the barcode would now be reposting shipment number 63, just as what we would expect it to do in Sage 300. If I now go back and refresh this shipment 63, you would now see that the system already triggered a adjustment in the quantity ship. So we now have 77 after, the, after we have posted the uh, return. Now, to demonstrate quickly the invoice return, uh, this requires us to create the invoice first in Sage order entry. So let me just quickly create an invoice in Sage. So again, this is a, a back office transaction that, uh, of course, we don't expect the warehouse people to be doing. This should be the accounting people posting the invoice. So now we have uh, invoice 62 created on the Sage 300 uh, order entry. Going back to the barcode, we can now go to the invoice return. Here I can search for the invoice that we want to return against. So it's invoice 62. And uh, here you can see the same details as what we have shipped earlier. So for whatever reason, let's say we want to return uh, two of this and uh, three of FG003. We can post. And this is now a OE shipment, uh, OE invoice return. You can see that the system triggered the posting of a credit note number three. And this is the same record as invoice credit note in Sage order entry. So here we will see that the last credit note is credit note number three with the following details that we have just posted on the barcode. So that's a very quick introduction to barcode OE processing. So now for barcode IC, uh, let's start with the internal usage. So this is of course referring to the inventory control internal usage functionality in IC. Uh, a common use for internal usage could be sampling or uh, scrapping of raw materials. So same as in Sage, we basically select where we are doing the uh, internal decision. Which category code to use? I can put a description here. So let's say this is scrap. And then who is doing it? So I can enter Terence. I can go to the detail. And then I can select which item do we want to scrap. So for this example, let's use A1103. 
how many? So let's say three. Of course, I can scan another one. So let's say uh, A105. Let's scan. Let's scrap two. And at this point, we can close. So this is now a scrap transaction posted using the barcode uh, inventory control basic module. If we go to inventory control transaction internal usage, we would see here that we have internal usage number three with the following details. So again, we are not changing the logic of Sage. Uh, it's just how we are doing it, who is doing it, and when it is being posted into Sage Jira. So that's internal usage. If we want to do a stop transfer, so take for example, if you want to move a certain raw material from location one to location two, we can do that using the transfer functionality. So here you can see the three transfer options. Uh, for this demo, let's use the one-step transfer. You can see that I can select where am I getting it from, moving it to which location. Uh, in Sage 300, you can also put additional costs incurred by the transfer. I can put description references, but let's say for today, I just want to move, let's say, uh, item A103 uh, from location one to two for a quantity of five. Uh, for A105, let's see, I'll, I'll just search again. I want to move six. So all of, of course you can scan if you have a barcode uh, gun or a, if you're using a handheld, or you can just type or search. So at this point I would post, and this is actually now a stock transfer transfer number three that has been posted on the Sage server. So we can go to inventory control, transactions, transfer, and the last record here would be transfer number three, which we have just posted a while ago. So it's as simple as that. For transit transfer, it's roughly the same. It's just that you're moving it to a transit location before you move it to the final location. If we are doing physical counts on a periodic basis, what we want now to happen is to enable the warehouse uh, personnel to record what they have counted as we move from one rack or from one pallet to another. So to do that, we need the warehouse person to first generate a worksheet within Sage. So that is done using the IC physical inventory. We want to generate an inventory worksheet. So let's say uh, the scope is from location one for items RM, let's say, 01 to RM010. Uh, note that we don't want the system to auto-populate the quantity on hand. This is because we want the barcode to be the one to populate that information. So this generates a worksheet. Uh, and of course, this is standard to Sage. What you will have here is now a physical inventory quantity for that count sheet, and this is uh, what you want to populate. So going now, going back now to the barcode, I can go to the stock count, indicate the location involved, extract the detail, and you can see that this is now the items that I have to process. So in the real world, we expect the warehouse to scan the labels of the items as they are doing their count. Of course, I can double click again, but let's say in my example, I, have, I saw or counted uh, 88 of RM001, for RM003, I counted 99, for RM005, I counted 111. Maybe after a while, I need to go on a break, let's say smoking or coffee break, so I can post. And this is now updated into the count in Sage 300. If we refresh, so let's reopen the physical inventory count sheet. You would see here that for location one, the system has already encoded the counted quantities uh, on the floor. So after the break, the warehouse guy can move, can come back, continue the count. So for location one detail, you can see the system displays what he has already previously counted, and he can now proceed to doing another count. So maybe he sees more of RM001, I see 77, for RM002, I see 66. Eventually, he would complete the count, he would post, and this is now 
uh, either added or updating the prior com. So this allows the user uh, the option to correct previously uh, counted items. But if there was no correction, I can just click on add and this will accumulate the count. So if again we go back to Sage, uh, refresh, you would now see that for the physical inventory quantities for location one, this is now the total. So that's a quick uh, demonstration of the stop count functionality for the barcode uh, inventory control basic module.